the infamous Bobby Reach <laughs> in the building. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, my J? Man, I'm just chilling, man. You know, coasting, enjoying life. You know, trying to get better each and every day, man. I'm just happy to finally be on here with my boy for sure. Man, I I appreciate you uh, coming on, man. I I appreciate you coming on. I I know it was a long time coming. You know what I'm saying? When yeah, I when yeah. I first got when I first got wind of you, uh, you know, one of my one of my subscribers, one of my viewers, sent me your you mm -hmm. know, the very first video. And, uh, you know, you were saying that you got uh, fired from Snyder. And I was right. like, I was like, OK, I got to reach out to young boy. I got to see what's up. With, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to see what's up with Snyder and everything. But then, you know, I reached <laughs> out to you, you know, via email. And then we got, you know, discombobulated in the email. And I, I right. now I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I did get in my feelings because I was like, oh, OK, well, young boy know, ghosted me and everything. And. <laughs> He ain't want to be bothered with the old man. So I get I was like then nah. I, I, I said to myself, I guess he must have felt some kind of way when I met uh made the video. But let's go back, man. Let's nah. let's, let's 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 go back, man. Let's let's go back. Let's uh let's do it. You know, where you where are you from? Washington? Where where are you from initially? Yeah, so pretty much I was you know, you might as well just say I'm from Seattle, Washington, man. This is pretty much where I grew up at. This is where I spent the bulk of my life, um, yeah, this is this is what raised me, man. We were originally from California, but um, I would say Seattle definitely raised me. I spent the, the better part of my life up here, and I'm only 27 years old, so it ain't been too long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you saying uh, so you say California? Why why did I why did I get the feeling that you was like a California dude? Like why did I get that? I feeling? don't know, man. I, hey, I don't know. It's in my bones, bro. It's in my it's in my bones, my blood. Like that's that's who we all originated from. So I just got that that swag about me. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely I'm, I claim Seattle, man. That's my friend. But what, but if you you was born and raised in 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 the sunshine, well, Florida is the sunshine state. But you was born and raised in uh, California. Why why did y'all leave California to to come up to Washington? Or you did that on your own when you got older. No, so what happened was we um we lived in California, but you already know like the infamous you know the gangs and all the the BS that's up there. My mom just my mom just thought at the time that you know she moved us to a, a different place, mm -hmm. which at the time Washington and it still is to this day. Washington is really it's it's not much going down down here. It's a lot of opportunity. It rains a lot. It's just slow. You know, California is very slow. And mm -hmm. um at the time, I guess her her ideology was you know I don't want my my son to you know, get involved with this stuff up here because California is so quick. Kids grow up so quick out there that it's very easy to get into some stuff. And she didn't want that for me or my sister. I have a little sister, so uh, she moved us, moved us up here when I was pretty young and we've been up here ever since. But all my uh, my family, great-grandparents, everybody from uh, California, we all kind of like grew up over like in the Watts area. The Watts area, we got some time there, some Compton and all that. Right. You know, the, the typical the typical story, you know. Right. So moving up, so moving up to Washington, which is a little bit slow, a uh, little bit slower pace, a little cold. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a she, lot slower. So she just basically did the move just to just to protect you and your sister, pretty much. Exactly. She just her her, you know, her, you know, a lot of us was, you know, born from, you know, single parents and a lot of our parents were old or you know, younger. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom had me when she was like eighteen or something like that. So at that time, the best decision that she, you know, thought she could make at that particular time, at that particular age, was just to get us away from all the BS. And honestly, it worked. You know what I'm saying? We came up here. Uh, I, I'm, I turned out a lot better than a lot of my, you know, my counterparts. You know, I don't game bang. I've never been arrested. I never went to jail. I never had nothing on my drivers. Where I've never been in any trouble whatsoever in my life. I've just always been. You know, in a way, a geek. You know what I'm saying? I take pride in calling myself that. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, what? Yeah. What? 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 What about you coming up, man? I mean, you, you, like you said, you, you're 27, so you're still a young gun. Uh, not mm -hmm. too long, you know, not too long ago, coming out of school. So, what you was doing prior to getting into trucking? So, man, you know, when you're young in your 20s, man, we just trying to find ourselves. Like, we just trying to, you know 
throw a whole bunch of stuff on the wall and see what sticks. So when I first, you know, came out of high school, I did the, the traditional thing. You know, I went to college. Everyone said, hey, you should go to college. My, my family said I should go to college. So that's exactly what I did. And at the time, you know, I'm a, uh, I would like to call myself a, a very multi-talented type of person. Like, I know how to do a lot of different things. I know how to draw. I know how to create fashion. Um, I know how to create videos. I know how to do everything, right? Not everything, but you get what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. at the time when I got out of school, I was like, okay, cool. Let's just, let's, you know, I'll go to college. And at the time, I really enjoyed fashion. I love dressing, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. what better of a way to, you know, go to school to learn something, how to, you know, or then to learn how to, you know, create your own clothes so I can eventually start my own brand and, and wear my own stuff and not just be a consumer, you know, wearing Nike and all these different brands. So I tried that. I went to school and it just didn't work out, man. I just didn't like the political BS of school. I didn't like having to, you know, go through all the rounds just to learn something that I could have learned first semester. They want you to wait to the, the fourth year for, before they, they start teaching some stuff that's going to make you money. And I really just subscribe to someone trying to teach me how to create a collection that's going to be on a Paris runway when, when you have never done it. See, that's a lot of, you know, different people in college, they'll try to teach you something that they've never done. You're trying to teach you business, but you've never owned the business before. So I just kind of got into that. So I dropped out and I started my own fashion line. I started my own fashion line, started creating my t-shirts, taught myself the manufacturing process and how to get things made, hats, logos. I designed my own logo, taught self-taught, myself how to use self-taught. Illustrator, how to query my own artwork, everything, man. Okay, 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 okay. Much much respect for you on that one, man. Um, all right, so bro, as I said before in the uh in the initial videos, I, I mean I, I seen your swagger, I see your you know, your personality, you know what I'm saying? And you know, uh-huh. you you're pretty outgoing. And I suggested, you know, a couple of YouTubers that you can look at, you know, to yeah, I remember. <laughs> you know, to, to you know, to do the skits and stuff like that because you know, I, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. I I kind of feel that you know trucking is not is is not for you. I mean that's that's just my my opinion, and it's no shade towards you in any way. I just like the way you present yourself on camera, and it and you just remind me of of the cats who I watch, and I just feel like yo go over there and check them out and see if you can you know correlate to them and start you know jumping on that uh that side of the field but right but trucking man i mean this this sounds so far from trucking that you know what you got into and i already put pretty much put two and two together in the real reason why you got into trucking you know what i'm saying but I, i want you to explain the reason why you initially decided to get your CDLs and get into trucking. Right. I'll tell you right now. So this is why I decided to get into trucking. All the other stuff I just told you, that's kind of, you know, you know, a part of my story, right? I got into trucking because I'm not sure if you realize, or I've said it multiple times on my channel, but um, I'm not sure if you know my story, but if you didn't know my story as well as your listeners, I'll tell them right now. So I got to trucking because about a year and some change ago, I was homeless. I was down and out. I was doing real estate. I was participating in a uh, strategy in real estate known as wholesaling real estate. And I was doing pretty well. I had my whole system going, but bam, I'm not going to say the P word because I know you can upload this to you know YouTube. We don't want to get you, you know, demonetized or like that, but <laughs> the gimmick happened, right? That happened. And as with a lot of people, everything shut down, right? Everything shut down. A lot of jobs were lost. A lot of businesses closed down, and I was affected by that in a major way. So at the time, I invested everything I had into my wholesale business. And in my mind, just like an entrepreneur, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go hard. I'm going to cold call. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to spend every dime I have to make this happen. And it was working. I got a lot of buzz. This was in Richmond, Virginia, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, uh, the demic ended up happening, and I was broke. I didn't have any money. And as I was in my car, as the world shut down or what seemed like it shut down, one thing I noticed that kept moving was trucks. Mm. I'm talking about when I was homeless, my gym even my gym even closed. I wasn't even able to take a shower anymore because the gyms closed. Mm. Everything closed. Everything stopped moving. I look at my window or out my window up the car that I'm sleeping in, by the way, shivering at night. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And trucks. 
I'm seeing trucks come in and out of Kroger. I'm seeing trucks still delivering things. So at the time, this wasn't registered to me. But I said to myself that that day that I want to gain a skill, right? I want to gain a skill that's recession-proof. I want to gain something that no matter what happens in this world, what happens, I don't care if we go to war, I don't care if we do anything, I will still be able to make some money. And at that time, I didn't, I didn't like eventually or immediately get my CDL. It was just a thought that stayed in my mind for a while. So right. fast forward about a year some change, I was like, you know what? I don't know why I want to get my CDL, but you know what? I'm going to get it so I can have this skill. So if this happens again, I will always be able to run it up in some way, shape, or form. And that's what originally inspired me to get my CDL. It was never to, you know, do something for 10 years, 20 years. I have no shade towards people who want to do trucks. It was to originally get a skill so I can always rely on. It's kind of like the plan B our parents used to say back in the day. You want to have exactly. a plan A, you want to have a plan B. I just want to gain the skill so I can forever, you know, be able to feed my family in every which way. All the YouTube and all the other stuff, that came secondary to trucking. And I appreciate what you said. A lot of people think that I'm just trying to be this YouTube star. I care about YouTube more than trucking. No, I really have a passion for trucking. I want to learn trucking. I want to learn how to back and do it in one shot and not always have to do two or three pull-ups. I want to really learn the skill. So by the time I'm done, then I can, you know, move on knowing that I did all that I could in trucking. People just be thinking, oh, you're trying to rub up the views and all that. No, I respect trucking. I have a passion for it. I want to learn it. And I respect the people who came before me. But you got, but bro, you, you, you got to admit, man. I mean, we, 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 I wasn't going to touch on YouTube until later, but bro, man, I mean, you, I mean, let's be honest. You came out of nowhere, my G. I mean, you, 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 I mean, like before, you know, before you, it was like YouTube, like, before you, YouTube trucking was kind of like, you know, kind of like quiet because everybody, right. everybody from YouTube trucking ran over to TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Right. They ran over to TikTok. And for the few of us that stayed over here on YouTube and, and representing trucking, because it's only a handful of us. You know, but majority, right, right. but majority of everybody that was doing YouTube trucking, it's either a not doing it no more, or b right, um, change their platform to a totally different platform. I mean, I could throw like right. you know, I I usually like fuck it, I, I'll throw names out there like my guy, little guy back in the day. A lot of people is comparing you to little guy because when little guy uh -huh. came out, he was. You know, he was all about the, you know, trucking and all about the YouTube. But then he started job jumping and, you know, people started right. seeing, you know, started seeing some correlation there. Like, bro, so far mm -hmm. you, you, you and two, what, two companies going on your third and all like that. And that's how uh -huh. little guy stopped. He didn't want to do trucking no more. He wanted to concentrate on the videos and all like that. Uh you know, mm -hmm. and a couple of, you know, and a couple of other guys like, you know, like I'll throw Trucker Brown out there. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah, I know but, him. You know, he, you know, he kind of like changed. He's still, he's still on trucking, but, you know, he's trying to, you know, trying to do other things with his platform too, because right. trucking, you know, kind of slowed down. But here, here's a young Jack that comes out of <laughs> nowhere. And and the first video, you know, all cheesing and all like that. I mean, bro, your smile, <laughs> your, your smile could light up a room, bro. I I, I I'll give I you that. It, man. You know, and I here it. and here you is, like, yo, I got fired from Snyder, and then boom, it just exploded from there. And then, you know, your other videos picked up, and you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, man, you. I mean, right now, you you're you're the flavor of YouTube right now. I mean, that, let's let's be and, honest. And, and you know what, my brother? Like that wasn't planned. Like here's the thing. So when when I first decided to get my CDO, I said to myself, I don't just want to be a truck driver. I want to be. I want to do something to monetize my life. So I want to pick something that would allow me to always be able to talk about something trucking as you and I both know, is something that you can, it's endless amounts of things you can talk about about trucking. See, everyone wants to drive a truck, 
me personally, I want to monetize me driving the truck as well as driving the truck. Mm. YouTube is a business. Social media is a business. And I think a lot of people, especially in the trucking industry, you know, let's be 100. Like the average age of a person in a trucking industry is like what? 40 and up, 50 and up. So it's not a lot of like, like, you know, young bucks like myself in there. Um, YouTube, when I did my research on all the people in YouTube, right? Because I know all of the people. I know the destructions. I know the Kinbees. I know, you know, the Riding With Daves. I know all them guys. I did my research on them guys before I decided to make content. Here's the thing. Here's what a lot of people are lacking in the truck industry. They're lacking transparency. They're lacking realness. And they just don't have any type of personality. Mm. That's that's why you always see me smiling because I'm representing for the young folks. I want young, vibrant, energetic people with swag to really come into this industry to feel like they can be who they want to be as long as they're getting their, their, their job done and they're, you know, being as efficient as possible. So that's what I'm all about, man. I'm not just out here trying to make videos. You know how many people I get in with them. I wish I can show you the amount of emails and Snapchats I get on a day-to-day basis of young bucks that look just like you and I who said, hey, bro, just because of that video, you made me want to go get my CDL and I got my CDL. I got people sending me their driver's license without anything blurred out, their address or nothing with their CDL on it. Like, I'm bringing more people into this industry and I'm just doing it by being real. That's why I show my mess ups. Everyone, you know, thinks I'm just trying to mess up and get pulled over on purpose and and take 45 minutes to back into a dock on purpose because I want to get views. No, that is the reality of someone who is doing this industry. We don't all start off doing one shots. We don't all start off, you know, as a master of backing. And that's the problem with this industry is no one ever wants to show their real stuff. They never want to show the life of a rookie. They want to wait six months to a year or maybe even on their second year to start filming to make it seem like they've always been good. Now, People I- mess with me because I'm real. Now I, I now I I I might want to I might want to stop you right there. Now, like I said, you know you, like I said, everything you everything you doing, everything you doing, B, has already been done. You see what I'm saying? Is I mean every I mean you showing. Look, you're a young gun. You're you 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 showing positivity. You're exciting. And you're a showmanship. And it's all about you. That's why your channel is growing. Not just not just because, you know, you you try to back up 45 minutes or you roll down the street with a rock or whatever, whatever. But you 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 pretty much a showmanship. And of course you're gonna get your handful of people that, you know, that feel some kind of way about you. But what I'm what I'm saying is people done this before. It's like it, it, right. it's like some other people say, like, yo, you're not the only one or you what you're not the first one to walk around with a GoPro on your head. You know what I'm saying? Or you're not the you're, not. You're, you're not the you're you're not the first one to the to, to talk about their struggles or anything like that. Now maybe you haven't I'll attest this to maybe you haven't found, you know, as many uh truck drivers, but people like keeping it one hundred. She you know, her struggles, like her job hopping struggles, her her struggles. She showed when she was taking a long time back in. So, you know, right. every everything, everything that you're doing and everything that you're showing and all like that and being transparent, you're not the first one to do that, my G. You know what I'm saying? But I respect Hey, I don't doubt it. I but I respect you for showing it. I mean, me personally. Like I said in the videos, I'm not, I not. I keep everything to the vest, my G. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So a lot of a, a lot of stuff, and I'm gonna coin your phrase. A lot of stuff is not for content. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. But and you know what? Go ahead. I realized that. Like I've grown. You know what I'm saying? I realized that everything isn't all. Like for instance, like. Like, I mean, bro, like, I've learned a lot. Like, people just think that I'm the same guy from even, like, a month or two ago. Like, Mm -hmm. I know now, like, that whole, that whole situation with the Orange Company, I'm not going to say their name, but the whole situation with the Orange Company, that could have been prevented. I like, I like that. You know, me being myself, me being out. 
I like yeah, that name. Yeah, it could have been presented. I, I, like, I like that I name, the Orange Company. We we ain't call we ain't the calling it we ain't calling it what they are, but the Orange <laughs> Company. I liked how you uh, coined the that. Orange Go company. ahead. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, me and my girlfriend always have this conversation. Like, that could have been prevented. I could have, I could have did, you know, what everybody else did. I could have just played my role. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just, it's just hard for me to just, bro. I guess you can just say shut up sometimes. Like, bro, if I feel some type of way, I'm just gonna say it. And maybe that 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 could have been prevented. I could still be working there today, but. I mean, you live on, you live and learn in life. I'm not trying to be your, perfect. I'm just, I'm just being me, man. Listen, your your first your first company ain't gonna be the end all be all. I mean, I I showed my video. I'm not sure if you watched it or seen it, but I I re up my video. What happened to me at US Express? And like I said, it mm-hmm. it, it pretty much mirrored.